Hey guys, it's Stephanie from Mow Your Lovely, where we carry the largest selection of wood flowers in the United States. Welcome back to another tutorial, and it's another spooky one. Welcome back to another tutorial and I think we're gonna do this a little bit different than what we normally do as far as how I like film and edit the videos so I'm super excited about this we'll see if you guys enjoy it um, I need to make a wreath from my front door for the pumpkin wreath or the pumpkin arch that we just finished up uh, I want to put a new Halloween wreath out there so I have a lot of different options but I think this is the one we're gonna go with so I'm gonna be taking this lovely spiderweb metal wreath. I uh, found this at Michael's, I believe. And then I'm taking a already pre-made wreath and we're gonna, something like that. Do you see where we're going? Do you see where we're going? So the first thing I need to do is uh, spray paint this black. I'm not gonna spray paint it completely. I want some of the green peeking through, but we're gonna spray paint that black first, and then we'll come back and start planning out the rest. I'm gonna take you along on the journey of like me pulling everything um, instead of me having everything ready to go. We're gonna we're gonna do this together. It's gonna be a ton of fun. I'm gonna get Vikram locked and loaded, ready to go, and let's do this. All right, you guys, so as that wreath is drying from the black spray paint, let's talk about the fillers and flowers that I think we're gonna be using. I forgot I had this. I have a bunch of purple pompous grass that I got a couple years ago, I think from at home. We might use this. I don't know for sure. I just pulled it just, to, just maybe. I also have these really dark blueberries. I think these could be fun sprinkling throughout the wreath. And then I have this like spiky little thing. I used some of this last year. I just like when it comes to the Halloween wreaths in particular, having lots of texture, but sometimes more like harsh or spiky kind of texture, if that makes sense. It does in my brain, but. And then for the flowers, I kind of want to go on a more like spooky romantic kind of vibe. <laughs> That's what I'm saying in my head. So I have these ginormous spider mums that are dyed and then we've got these lovely zinnies and marigolds now these particular dyed flowers were in our fall um celebrate the seasons crate and as you're watching this the pre-order is already closed for the winter one so i'm sorry about that um but there's always some dyed flowers in there so i grabbed those um we have a fall mix i think it's still available on the website right now and i think i'm gonna pull the um, red flowers out of that. It's just a really pretty burgundy. And then with that thistle in the center, again, it's got that spiky kind of vibe to it. And then I have this dyed assortment, which I believe is also in the shop. But this one's got some darker purple Sophia's and then We've got the ranunculus, but they're gray with like a little purple center. So I'm gonna grab some of those. And then there's some other purple flowers in here too. Um, little, I think these are Little Miss Ivies in a purple color as well. So I'm gonna grab those. I'm debating about grabbing these blue ones because they'll go with those blueberries, but now that I just put it next to them, probably not. So we're not gonna use those. So I'm just gonna grab three of three or one of everything. So then I have a good selection. And I also have these anemones. I feel like they're gonna pop too much though and we kinda wanna keep it a little bit more 
on the muted purples and red tones. So I don't think I'm gonna use those, but we might change our minds. Uh, bark flowers are also a great option in a piece like this, but here's, there's our mound of flowers. Here's the extra filler we're gonna kind of slide into there. And then now what we need to do is glue this onto the other wreath. Um, it should be done drying now. So I'm gonna go grab that and we'll get this installed. Now, as the glue dries, I am gonna add just a little bit extra stability. So I'm taking, what is this? 22 gauge paddle wire and making tiny little staples of sorts. And we're just gonna slide those in in various spots of the web to just add a little bit more security. We're good. I think I can flip this without it gluing itself to the table. We'll give it one more second and then we'll flip it and start putting in the flowers. Isn't it looking nice and lovely and spooky? We're not done. I mean, you could stop here if you wanted to, but I'm not done. So these I'm gonna take all apart and then I will stem them up. so that they can easily be slid into the wreath. So to do that, again, get Vikram or your glue gun. You don't have to name your glue gun Vikram if you don't want to. Put a little bit of glue on the end of a wire, slide it on in and let it just set just a couple seconds and then you're ready to go. Typically at this point too, I would start stemming my flowers, but I don't know which flowers I wanna go where, so I'm going to wait to do that. So we're just gonna stem those as we go. You can also just glue them directly into your piece if you want, but I want to um, be able to maneuver them a little bit, so I'm not gonna glue them directly onto the wreath itself. We're gonna use stems for it. At least that's the plan for now. It might change, we'll see. When we're adding in any filler, we're gonna pay attention to how the rest of the greenery is going. You don't wanna go in the opposite direction because it's gonna throw everything off in your eyes. So you wanna go in the same direction as the rest of it. So go in the flow of things. And then we're just gonna take the wires and we're gonna slide them into the wreath form. You can add a little bit of glue to the ends of your wires if you want to for extra stability. I typically don't, and so far I've been fine, but if you're gonna sell a wreath, you may want to. I'm going to do at least three clumps of these. No, nope. I lied, we're gonna do more. 
now we have five clumps. And I think that should be good. We might decide to trim some of these down, but let's just put them in and see. Berries kind of are going in the flow of the wreath itself, so I'm not really adjusting those. I'm just putting them in the spot that makes the most sense for the way that the... I'm having some trouble getting them to go in. And I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut off this spot. I think I'm gonna take a little wire. I'm gonna fold it in between these two. And you can take then a needle nose plier and kind of short or like tighten that up if you want, but I'm just gonna slide it in. I think it'll be fine as is. So, all right, our berries are added in. Let's see what we think about the pompous grass. This stuff sheds so much. It does add a little bit of whimsy. I, yeah, I think we're gonna keep it. This is kind of going in a different direction than I expected, but I'm not mad about it. I think I'm gonna have pompous grass all over me though. Which, that's nothing new if you've been around here for a while. I think every time I use pompous grass in a tutorial, it ends up like in my hair or on my eyelash or somewhere on a shirt. And today will be no different, I already know. Again, the flowers, I think what we're gonna be doing is we are gonna stem these up. You could glue them directly in, but I'm gonna stem them up so that I can kind of adjust their, the head of the flower, so to speak, so I can make it fit or go in a direction that I want it to. And what I mean by that is once we get it on the into the wreath, you can then say go that way or you want it to face that way, you can just adjust the flower to face in the direction that you want with that wire. Now, I just did what I totally tell people not to do, which is to just start, well, sometimes I do it and sometimes I don't, but what I am gonna do is I like to go by each style flower and evenly kind of disperse them throughout the wreath for this kind of style. So that's what I'm gonna do. Since this is an all covering kind of wreath, we're not focusing on one area or anything like that. So I'm just gonna kind of separate everything into triangles like we do in arrangements sometimes. We're not gonna put them always in the same spot though, so we're not gonna always put them like right on top we got to remember the sides and then the inside too now i only have two of these so i'm going to mirror these two so if one's there we'll put one there The wires for these two don't need to be super long. You can get away with pretty short wires. You just need to be able to get it into the, the main part of the wreath form so that you can slide it in there. If you ever get your wire in too far, while it's still, the glue's still warm, just pull it back. It'll be fine.
Okay, we're almost done, but we're not quite there. For the final piece to kind of bump up this to be a full on spooky ooky kind of kooky little wreath, we are gonna add some skulls. These are from the Dollar Tree or the Buck 25 store. And I am gonna glue these in. But you could also put like a wire on them. It would be a little bit harder because of the type of plastic that they are. But if you struggle enough, we'll see if I can get it to go in there. Yeah, you're gonna have to really work at it to get that wire in there. So we're gonna just, <laughs> we're just gonna glue them in. I had a feeling those would be a little bit more difficult, so no biggie. And I'm not gonna be super worried about the placement in terms of like, if I lay it down and it moves slightly, it's okay. It's not the end of the world, I promise. And I know that this is my top because there's actually a ring on the wreath form itself for hanging purposes. So I know that that's where my top is. Okay, so spiders. Do we want spiders in here? Let me grab the spiders quick if I can figure out where I put them. Oh, there's the spiders. I feel like the spiders are going to like get lost in this unless I put some maybe webbing here. But we could slide a couple. It's gonna be one of those things that only really I know that it's there. So. I am gonna sprinkle a couple in, I think, maybe on some of the lighter colors. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I think, I think it's done. All right, pompous check. I'm sure there's something somewhere <laughs> on me hanging off, I don't know. I might be lucky this time. Maybe I don't have any pompous grass on me. So there you guys go. There you have it. A lovely kind of romantic-ish, I would say, Halloween wreath. This is a lot of fun to make. This will be going out on my front door. If you're loving these videos, can't get enough, wanna know the next time we go and post a video, a craft tutorial, like subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. I'm so sorry, I had a blank. My brain just went blank. <laughs> if you wanna find out about the 150 style solo wood flowers along with craft supplies and greenery, go to oyourlovely.com. But before you do, let me give you something, a treat. Use the code YouTube30 to get 30% off your first order. All right, you guys, I have one more wreath to make. I don't think we'll put it on YouTube, but I have another door that I need a wreath for. So I'm gonna work on that. And then maybe we'll like dive full in onto fall and Christmas, dare I say, projects coming up super soon. But I'm gonna milk all of the Halloween projects for as long as I can. So hopefully you enjoy them and we'll see you next week right here on YouTube. I'm Stephanie from Oh You're Lovely and you my friends are absolutely lovely. Bye guys.